uh, up. Chris was uh, born and raised in South Tampa. After graduating from Plant High School, he played football at Washington University in St. Louis and graduated from the Divinity School of Duke University. Chris recently completed his MBA from the University of Florida. Um, and he has a whole bunch of other background, but um, the big thing is that he uh, co-founded um, Horizon Church in South Tampa, which is one of the fast up growing, up, up and coming uh, churches in South Tampa and throughout the city. Um, you all know his wife, Erica, because we invite her here all the time, but we've never invited Chris, and so we figured we'd do equal opportunity. So Chris, take it away. Let us pray. Gathered here in the spirit of community and shared purpose, we invoke the divine presence to guide these deliberations. As we convene in this assembly, let the light of wisdom shine upon the discussions, leading us towards decisions that uphold justice and fairness and the betterment of our beloved city. We embrace the power of unity and call upon the spirit of compassion to permeate our hearts and minds today. May our collective efforts be fueled by a deep sense of responsibility to the diverse tapestry of individuals who call Tampa home. With gratitude for this opportunity to contribute to the well-being of our own community, may the decisions made here today echo the values of love, understanding, and collaboration. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Carlson? Here. Hurtak? Clendenin? Here. Henderson? Present. Vieira? Here. Miranda? Here. And Maniscalco? Here. We have a physical form. All right. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt the meetings, the minute from the January 25th meeting, 2024? Motion from Councilmember Miranda. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Councilmember uh, Carlson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Before I go into the agenda, I would just like to introduce <laughs> Katrina House with the Black History Committee to come up and speak on the Black History Month celebration. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Katrina House. I am a certified procurement analyst with the City of Tampa Purchasing Department, our job board of contracting administrator, a 22-year employee here with the city, and I am the current City of Tampa Black History President. I, along with a few representatives from CLT BHC, would like to extend a formal invitation to the Mayor Jane Castor, to Chief of Staff and the Administration, to Tampa City Council and the wonderful and dedicated people who make up our great communities to join us on Friday, February 16th at the Tampa Convention Center as we host our 36th um, City of Tampa Black History Celebration. Um, we would like to recognize the, co the contributions by African Americans and those of African descent. And it was first approved to be publicly celebrated and recognized throughout the city of Tampa in 1988 by Mayor Sandy Friedman and continues to receive support by Mayor Jane Castor today. So once again, I would like to invite everyone to join us on February 16th at 11 a.m. at the Tampa Convention Center. Ballroom D, as we celebrate individuals who continue to promote Tampa's history and culture. Our theme this year is family unity, rooted in wisdom, providing a spotlight on the significance of family traditions, encouraging support to family-owned businesses and small local businesses, and the importance of community service. Our keynote speaker will be Ms. Kevia Williams of Mahogany Kids Fine Arts Foundation, and our mistress of ceremonies will be Dahlia Dangerfield of Spectrum Bay News 9. This event is free and open to the public. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You as well. All right. I'm going to go through the agenda before we go into <laughs> ceremonial activities. Uh, I have a memo requesting that item number 12 be removed from the agenda. May I have a motion to that effect to remove 12? We have a motion to remove from Council Member Miranda, second from Council Member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. All right. I'm going to go now through um, staff reports. I'm going to kick it off uh, with administration update. Chief Bennett, you do have uh, an item at, at that time, correct? Good morning, Council. Good morning, Public. John Bennett, Chief of Staff. Yeah, we do have a literally a one-minute item to show the public on how they can better view our capital improvement projects. Okay, thank you very much. All right, item number 39, that's a six and a half million dollar item. Um, do we need Mr. Baird here present for this? I know we've gotten a million emails regarding this. Um, I would say yes, 
Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that item, but uh, I would say yes to keep 39. Yeah, and it, it, not just Mr. Yes, Baird, but Mr. Day. Mr. Day and Mr. Baird, if they could be available for item 39 under staff reports. All right, item number 40 will be heard first um, under staff reports. Um, we got, a, a, I think, a memo or a request regarding that. I don't know if Councilman Carlson, you made that. But anyways, item number 40 is going to be heard first. Then item number 44 will be heard right after 40, and then we will go back to 39 and go down the regular cycle. Um, item number 41, there's a request to continue this item to February 15th. We have a motion to continue 41. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Item number 42 is a request to continue to October 3rd. Second. All right. We have a request to continue to October 3rd, but we do have a... Uh, all right, we have a, a memo here. All right, we have a motion from Council Member Miranda, second from Council Member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, item number 43, there is a request to continue to item number, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, to 15. If I may, if, if I may uh, with 42, yes, I'm looking at that. Um, I didn't, I, I made that motion. Actually, I did. Okay, I was going to say, because that's why I was confused. Okay, okay. Thank you, Councilwoman. No, because I, okay. Then I disregard. All Mr. Chair, yes. just for the public's, uh, ed, you know, information, that does state on the agenda that it's to be continued to February 15th, but yeah. that's not the case. Is that correct? Item 42? It's item on the addendum. Item 42 is, is <coughs> a request to continue to October 3rd. October 3rd, okay, yes. on the addendum. Thank right. you. And if I yes, may, but, Mr. Oh, oh, but the hope is that it can come back sooner. Yes, ma'am. The, the issue is mm -hmm. um, in finding that property, there's a lot of property, but unfortunately the, the GIS system is so old that every single property, they have to look at the individual property That's and they have to read what it's allowed for. It's a mm -hmm. very laborious process, but I'm told that we did put money in the budget to upgrade their GIS mapping mm -hmm. this year. And no, and, and, and thank you. I always just ask the clerk to have uh, that reflector for Councilman Hurtak so that my mind is not so easily confused. Councilmember Carlson. Yeah, just with a couple of these, um, uh, there's been a lot of discussion behind the scenes in the community about a pro huge piece of property the city owns on Sly. And um, it, it would be great if the administration could come back at some point and tell us what their plans are with that land and whether that is going to be used for any of these items. Thank you. Councilmember Clendenin. Are you talking about the fly in 22nd Street? Okay, very good, thanks. Thank you very much. All right, item number item number 43. Uh, there's a request to continue this of, uh, February 15th. May I have a motion? One motion. Motion from Councilmember uh, Miranda, second from Councilmember Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, item number 45. We do have a uh, memo transmitting a written report from Mr. Wigington. Um, but there's also a request to continue this item to February 15th. What is the pleasure of council? Are we? I would just accept and file this memo. All right, so we can get a, a motion to receive and file item 45. So motion from council member Clendenin, second from council member Hertak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next is item number 46. There's a request to continue to April 18th. Move. Motion from council member Moran. Do we have a second? Second from Council Member Carlson, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number 49, we have a request to continue to March 7th. May I have a motion? So moved. Motion from Council Member Miranda, second from? Second. Second from Council Member Clendenin, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number 50, there's a request to continue to March 7th. So, uh, Okay, when I see on 49, it says specifically increase height limit in the West Shore Overlay District. Kennedy goes into that. So item number 50, may I get a mo motion to continue second. item 50 from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that covers our um, staff reports. I also want to make note that at 11 a.m. we're going to take a recess. For a closed session meeting on the uh, up at the eighth floor in the conference room, and then we'll resume council after that uh, and go back to uh, back to the business. Chairman, so yes, I'm sorry, forgive me, yep. Shelby City Council Attorney. Could you please uh, just with regard to 47 and 48, did you discuss those at all? Uh, 47 and 48. Are uh, staff going to be present for those two? Let me see. Let me see. I'm sorry. Uh, 47 and 48. 
Uh, we need uh, 47 of staff to appear for discussion requiring projects to be approved by council in addition to be added to the CIT and contract staff approval. We will have staff present for 47 and item number 48 regarding the chief diversity officer. Yes, correct? No. Or do we not need anybody? There is a written report. Written report? It's a written report. Okay. We have a motion to receive and file the written second. report. Motion from Councilmember Clendenin, second from Councilmember Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that covered everything, sir. Um, I'm sorry, item number 51, I don't know if I mentioned it, the AHAC committee to provide yes. the minutes, so that's a yes. Um, I don't believe that the AHAC committee needs to be here. That's the one where y'all are giving me your recommendations for what you want. So it's just a conversation okay. between the seven of us. So we'll have city council present for 51. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that covers the addendum. Let me just check everything here. All right, may I have a motion to approve the agenda and the addendum? Motion second. from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye, any opposed? All right, we're gonna start off with the Police Officer of the Month, Council Member Vieira, take it away. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, yes. do you want oh. me to make my comments? Uh, after, after ceremonial, if you'd like. After ceremony? Yeah. yeah. Or do you want to do it now? Well, yes. But All right, do it now, Mr. Shelby, and then we'll get it out of the way. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. Councilman Vieira. Oh. Chief, I'm sorry. I just want to make this, uh, and I'll try to make this brief. Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney, good morning to the public. Uh, this morning, members of the public will be allowed a reasonable opportunity uh, after the uh, ceremonial items to address any item on the agenda before the City Council takes official action on an item. A three-minute time limit appears. Uh, applies to all speakers providing public comment. Speakers and members of the public are also reminded that they are to refrain from disruptive behavior, including making vulgar or threatening remarks or making or causing disruptive noises or sounds or displaying signs or graphics. Speakers are also reminded to refrain from launching personal attacks against any city official, sta staff member, or member of the public. The chair will rule out of order any person who speaks without being recognized or attempts to address the council from outside the speaker area at the podium. Persons failing to comply with the council rules may also be ruled out of order and, at the discretion of the chair, may be removed from the chambers for the remainder of the rest of the day's meeting. Now, and if you're here to speak on items set for a public hearing, you will have that opportunity when the item is heard later in the agenda. No public comment will be taken later during staff reports. The time to speak about the items on the consent docket and staff reports are going to be early on during agenda public comment. And finally, city council members should refrain from engaging a speaker during public comment, and the public should be aware that the city council does not take questions or have a dialogue during public comment. That'll be your opportunity to express your position. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One other item regarding the agenda. We do have a time certain at 11 o'clock this morning. Yes, sir, I did announce that uh, about the closed sessions. And just a, just a reminder that we will keep, have to keep track of the clock, and as we get closer to 11, we'll have to keep that in, uh, in mind. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, uh, Councilman Vieira. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it is my great pleasure to, on behalf of Tampa City Council, present our uh, Tampa Police Department Officer of the Month, um, Tampa City Council commendation to Detective Julio Tagliani, and as I was saying, that's a that's a very Tampa name. Uh, it really, really is uh, for his amazing work. Our our wonderful Chief Burkhaw will talk about some of the wonderful work this detective has done with a, with a, a really critical area that so many communities care about, which is sexual sexual exploitation of minors uh, and other critical issues. And like I always say, we always do our uh, Officer of the Month and our Firefighter of the Quarter to express the support that our community has for our first responders, both our uh, firefighters as well as our uh, police officers. So, uh, Chief, if you would, sir. Good morning, Council, and thank you for this opportunity to highlight our officers' great work. And in this case, this detective, as Councilman Vieira alluded to, is out there protecting our most vulnerable victims, our youth. So I'll just highlight some of the reasons why he is Officer of the Month. So Detective Tagliani has been with the Tampa Police Department since 2014, and he's currently assigned to our Special Victims Unit. And just last year, and when you get this number, it's going to be disturbing, especially for the victims. He's worked more than 120 cases involving exploitation and Internet-related offenses involving children. So just think about that if we didn't have the spine detective out there doing the job he's doing. This is, obviously, it's one of the most diff difficult types of cases to investigate based on the nature of the crime. 
Detective Tagliani's dedication to seeking justice for victims of child exploitation led to the arrest of numerous suspects on local and federal levels. In one notable case, he was reviewing evidence collected after a search, and he identified unreported acts of sexual abuse to a child. This had never been reported to us, as well as the identification and location of the offense occurred. The offender, who had been collecting and creating explicit material undetected for more than a decade, is now behind bars thanks to the great work of Detective Tagliani. In November of 2023, Detective Tagliani was also recognized by the Central Florida Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force for submitting the most known and unknown images and videos to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. That's an amazing feat in and of itself. It shows you how proactive he is and passionate about his work. In his efforts locally have made an impact across the nation. Several of his assigned cases have led to arrests in other states, not even our own hometown where the suspects were actively soliciting children and creating material. Contributing to local, state, federal task forces, paired with passion for serving our Tampa's youngest residents for the dangers and life-changing impacts of sexual exploitation, Detective Tagliani is most deserving of our Officer of the Month for February. So congratulations. Thank you. And uh, now we have members of our community, starting with our PBA, who would like to come up and uh, and wish you well, sir. Uh, good morning, Council. Brandon Barclay, President of Tampa PBA. Uh, Detective, great job Thank as you, usual. Uh, we're going to present you with this plaque. If, if they could look over here. And also on behalf of uh, Pete Brady and Bush Gardens, they're going to uh, present your family with four pack of uh, tickets. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Detective. I'm Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. We want to thank you so much for everything you do for protecting our city. We want to give you this gift card to enjoy any of our restaurants across the state of Florida. All right. Enjoy some paella. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Good, Good morning. I'm Mary Dillon from the Stratus Center for the Performing Arts. Thank you for your work in our community. We really appreciate all you do. This is tickets for you and the guests to see your Broadway show at the Stratus Center for the Performing Arts. And I hope you enjoy right. yourself. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Good everyone. Morning. I'm Jennifer Curry from Bill Curry Ford. Just here to congratulate you and thank you thank for you. everything that you do for our community and our kids. And in, in this bag, some, some goodies and also uh, service for your car um, okay. and Great. a gift card as well. So thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Mary Lou Bailey. I'm Mark Haney with the zoo. Yeah, we're here on behalf of Zoo Tampa to um, thank you for your um, tireless work. It's uh, particularly special since I'm the mother of two uh, teenage daughters, and the online stuff is scary as all what <laughs> is you know better than anybody. So thank you for your tireless service. Thank you to everybody who serves. And on behalf of Zoo Tampa, we've, we're presenting you with an um, annual membership. So take it out okay. and enjoy yourself in the wild with our animals. Thank you very and much. Thank you thank again. You. And this is an African painted dog. They get their prey more than any other mammal in Africa, 80% of the time. Lions, 20%. So we thought this would be appropriate. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Morning, Council. Mike MacArthur, Steps Towing Service. Officer, congratulations Thank on you. job well done. Thank you for everything you do for our community. On behalf of Todd Steph and Steps Towing, we'd like to give you a thank you card and have dinner on us. Take some time off. You deserve it. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Very thank you very much. Good morning, Council. Jill Witecki with Tampa Theater. I, too, am a mom of two little girls. Uh, so any help that we can get in keeping those kids and their classmates and friends safe and innocent, we really appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Uh, this is an annual membership to Tampa Theater. Please come okay. and see us. All right. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Chief. Detective Brian Ford with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and your story is unbelievable. Thank you for you and your family's sacrifice and dedication to the community. We have a little tradition at One Buck. Whenever anybody goes over and above, they get a game ball. And cool. hearing your story, you definitely went over and above. Awesome. So that's a custom game ball. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank much. you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Steve Michelini, I'm here on behalf of a couple of different folks, but uh, first I'd like to offer on behalf of all of these folks uh, the deepest sympathy for Gwen Henderson and her family and the passing of her mother. Uh, may God keep her and rest her in his loving arms, and uh, we offer our deepest sympathy for you and your family. Um, on behalf of a couple of different folks, uh, we have some gift certificates for you. And uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge the fact that uh, the 101 cases that you've been working on is a, is a pales in comparison with the problem. The average age of the uh, victims is 12 to 14 years old. And um, the tragedy that, that occurs because of that is uh, absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's huge. Um, there are issues regarding websites. There are trolling, all kinds of different things. There is a national hotline uh, for human trafficking, and I'll, I'm going to give you that number. It's 888-373-7888, and I know that the officer is involved with that as well. So this is not just a local problem. It's a state and national problem, and um, it, it is, uh, goes without, uh, without saying that these individuals are victimless. Parents watch your children's cell phones and uh, keep track of what's going on with their computers. <coughs> On behalf of Meat Market in Tampa, we're going to provide you with a gift certificate so you can enjoy yourself for um, breakfast or dinner. On behalf of Yummy House China Bistro, gift certificate and enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of the uh, Chicho's Restaurant Group, enjoy yourself breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And on behalf of uh, Bella Brava, which is over in the Midtown section, enjoy yourself for lunch or dinner. And uh, please take these gift certificates with you. Thank you. Congratulations. So um, on behalf of a grateful uh, city of Tampa and a grateful uh, Tampa City Council from all seven of us, sir, uh, Detective, we give this to you. I also want to acknowledge really fast, if I may, I know your wife is in the audience, and we have a lot of your colleagues who are here uh, who are just in support of the work that you do. And like everybody said, the, the, the work that you do, I know as an attorney, I've spoken to a lot of state attorneys who deal with that area, and it's the, the thing speaks for itself. And our gratitude to you is just immense. So thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank God you bless you. Much. We really thank appreciate you. you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. And if you'd like to see you. I appreciate the recognition. Uh, I can honestly say I've never worked a case by myself. It takes the entire squad. So a lot of, a lot of this goes to them who believe in the mission of protecting these kids. So again, a lot, a lot goes to the ICAC squad. So thank you very much, though. Thank you very much. Congratulations, sir. We appreciate all your, all your hard work and, and what you do for this community. Any council member wish to chime in? Yes, sir, Councilman uh, Carlson. Yeah, um, I also am the parent of three kids, and I think this dealing with these issues is every parent's worst nightmare, and we all try to monitor like, I can't, like we can. But um, if you have any recommendations or advice and we can help propel that out to the community to help prevent you from having to deal with these issues, please let us know. Um, I could never do your job. I, I think I would be in tears every day. So thank you for your, your strength and courage in, in working on this. And thank you for protecting our children. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Congratulations, sir. Thank yes, you. sir. One, I will say I never feel safer as the days that we do this with all the Tampa police officers in the, in the room. So thank you so much. <laughs> we need this kind of presence every day, I think. Um, secondly, does anybody in the room have a razor they could let uh, Brandon borrow? Uh, there's something that's going on here. I don't know what this is. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Congratulations, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Council Member Vieira, do you have ATU as well? No. Okay. Oh, Council Member Clendenin. I'll be able to wait for Yes, 
Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Am I quiet in here yet? I think so. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Councilman Pendana. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I uh, have the privilege of uh, introducing a couple folks that are standing up here. Um, one, I want to say, you know, representing the, the employees of the city of Tampa. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Simon. He represents ATU, uh, the Amalgamated Transit Union, and represents a huge swath of the city employees. The city wouldn't run without uh, himself and the folks that he represents. Uh, and I th a lot of those folks are behind the scenes. Some of them are the people that the, the city of, uh, citizens of the city of Tampa see every day doing things like picking up your track, uh, trash or uh, they, they, people they don't see. And I think it's part of what we're going to recognize today of an incredible employee. And I'm going to hand the microphone over to Mr. Simon to introduce his employee of the quarter. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning, Council. And good morning, City of Tampa. I'm Steve Simon, President of ATU Local 1464. And I'm happy to be here this morning to introduce you to the ATU Employee of the Month, Mr. Darren Robertson. Darren has been with the City of Tampa over 22 years and has been an employee in the Purchasing Inventory Division his entire career. He is known for being very personable and providing courteous customer service. Darren frequently receives positive feedback and compliments on his work ethic from the various city employees that he serves daily. The Advanced Wastewater Treatment Plant, where I'm from, <laughs> warehouse where he works supplies over 3,000 items to field workers and Dan Darren has the technical knowledge to answer product questions, provide information on product availability, and he knows exactly where the items are stored. Darren stepped up and played a critical role during the COVID-19 pandemic, covering staffing shortages and ensuring that the day-to-day -day operations continue to run smoothly at the warehouse. Darren is knowledgeable, reliable, and always comes to work with a positive attitude. He takes great pride in helping his coworkers and customers. And we appreciate you, Darren, and all that you do to participate in keeping the city of Tampa running. And on behalf of ATU Local 1464, I would like to present you with this award. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> also, uh, I have a letter from the mayor, and if I may read it. Yes. All right. Dear Darren, congratulations on being selected as the Amalgamated Transit Union's Employee of the Month for your professionalism, strong work ethics, and for going <laughs> above and beyond in all aspects of your position as an inventory specialist, including mentoring others and readily accepting additional assignments. Your dedication, abilities, proficiency, and outstanding attitude make you highly deserving of this special recognition, and you are well known for your personable and courteous customer service skills. You demonstrate a firm commitment to the City of Tampa Purchasing Department and to our community, and you set a shining example for others to follow. It's employees like you, Darren, that make me proud to serve as mayor. Thank you for your dedication. Mayor Jane. So, Mr. Robertson, on behalf of Tampa City Council, I'd like to present you this commendation in recognition of your hard work for the city of Tampa. 22 years, right? Is that what I heard? Yes, sir. So, you know, it's, it's one thing I say, you know, we see these folks come up before us representing you know, the employees, but you, it's, it's always a team, but it's nice to have individually recognized for all that work. 22 years, you know, you, you're not out there in front, but you're behind the scenes making making all the widgets work and getting everything doing, you know, making it all happen for the city of uh, city and the and people that live here. So thank you so much. So because of your dedication to the city of Tampa and your exemplary work of going above and beyond, you've been chosen for this mark of distinction as the ATU Employee of the Month. Tampa City Council, your peers and superiors would like to commend you for your dedication and service to our community. We commend your commitment to your team and your ability to provide them support to the highest of professional standards. We recognize your invaluable contributions to the City of Tampa and thank you for your 22 years of service. It is an honor for the City of Tampa Council to present Darren Robertson with this commendation on the first day of February 2024. 
Thank you. And now it's your opportunity to speak if you'd like to. Okay, I'm honored to be recipient of this award, and I appreciate it very much. I thank everyone for the everything that they had said that was good. <laughs> thank you. Council? You. Does anybody from council wish to say anything? No. Yes, sir, Councilman Vieira. Yeah, just uh, just thank you, sir, for all that you do, and and this is it's a big honor, and and you're obviously worth it, and I I, I really hope that you look on today and look back on all your years of service of the city of Tampa and that you have pride. Because um, we, we have pride in you, we have pride in all of our workers, and um, again, it's a big day for you, and I hope you bask in it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Councilman Miranda. Uh, thanks, like uh, Councilmember Riera said, I want to thank you on behalf of all the citizens. Uh, you do something for everyone in the city of Tampa, everyone, not only you, the people that work for you. You keep Tampa moving, keep it clean. The Gasparilla Parade was an example of a year in and year out. I don't know how all of you, along with keep Tampa clean, the people that volunteer to do the work and pick up beads. You guys do, ladies and gentlemen, your division do a fantastic job everywhere. And when you mention water and wastewater, you know, I hate to brag on the city of Tampa, but I always do. And you know that the city of Tampa is only one of seven municipalities in the whole country that has a AAA rating in water. It used to be 13, now they're down to seven. And there's only two in Florida, Palm Beach County and city of Tampa. So that's part of the city commitment to make sure that our infrastructure is solid and without a solid infrastructure, you can't build anything, not even a little tiny house. So thank you for what you do on a daily basis, sir. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I just wanted to say, say thank you also. The facility you work in is a, a, a huge investment by the city, a really important piece of infrastructure, and it couldn't operate without you and your colleagues. So thank you for um, adhering to uh, uh, policies of excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Thank you for all your hard work, you and your team, and, and everybody involved. You, you truly deserve this. And we have folks from the community that want to give you a couple of gifts, so we'll start bringing them up. <laughs> Thank you, Council. Once again, Jill Witecki from Tampa Theater. And nobody understands better than a theater that nothing goes on the stage or screen without a strong team behind the scenes. Yep. So thank you thank for being you. part of that behind the scenes. And please come see us over the next year. Mr. Simon, Mr. Robinson, I'm Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. Thank you so much for all that you do. We'd like to present you with this gift card to enjoy at any of our restaurants, the Columbia, Eulalie, Goody Goody. Please enjoy yourself. Thank you. Anything you'd like. Thank you. Congratulations. Council, Mike MacArthur steps toe in service. Without gentlemen like you, our city doesn't, doesn't exist and we can't function and we appreciate everything you do to, to help keep things going and and on behalf of Todd Stead of Steps Towing, we'd like to dinner on us, a little thank you card. Thank you for everything you do. Thank and you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Brian Ford with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And from one behind the scenes guy to another, thank you. You're welcome. 22 years of uh, service and sacrifice for our community, not only from you, but your family. Thank you. And uh, thanks for all you do behind the scenes. And, on behalf of the Glazer family and our entire organization, we have a little tradition. And whenever anybody goes over and above, we get a game ball. So there's a custom game ball oh, for you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for doing On behalf of Zoo Tampa, we're giving you um, a, a fun day at the zoo with six passes and some swag here. So thank you for your service. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, uh, council, for people that don't know, Councilman Hertek, this is the highlight of her day, and she's got to see what stuff the animal is. <laughs> a sea turtle because of the water. So. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Um, as a former warehouseman, I can assure you that products don't get to where they're supposed to be without efficient use and work in the warehouse. And you got to make sure they're in the right cubby hole, they're in the right pallet, uh, that the orders are correct, and then you double check to make sure that they go where they're supposed to go. So uh, at, a, at an early age, I was a warehouseman that did exactly that, and we appreciate the significance of what you do. Thank you. Um, on behalf of Bella Brava, we're providing you with a gift certificate, and uh, so you can go enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of Chicho Restaurant Group, we're providing you with a 
breakfast, lunch, or dinner, enjoy yourself there. Uh, on behalf of the meat market, which is in Old Hyde Park, lunch or dinner. And on behalf of Yummy House China Bistro, lunch or dinner. Go enjoy yourself and uh, make sure your fellow warehousemen don't, you know, kind of bone own in on what you're doing. <laughs> I know Steve, you know, he might want to go with you or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, congratulations. All, all of my favorite restaurants. <laughs> enjoy. Congratulations. Thanks, my brother. Thanks, yes, thanks Thank for you. bringing them up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Is the accommodation there? Oh. Great job, man. All right, next we're going to present a commendation of Beth Alden, recognizing her contributions to the community and her 22 year service. With the Tampa Planning Organization, I'll be presenting it, and I hand the gavel over to Council Member Clendenich. Yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. <laughs> I recognize Chairman Guido Menescalco. Thank you very much. So today we um, we honor Beth Alden, who um, you became director. In 2015, right? Beginning of 2015. Okay, so I came along in spring of 2015. So, you know, as, as you were director, you were one of the first uh, people to brief me. I've been on the uh, former MPO, now TPO, since then. I'm coming up on my nine year anniversary, very exciting. And uh, Beth has been there every step of the way until recently, since uh, she's retired. But we want to present you with this plaque. And it's the pleasure that we present, uh, with pleasure, that we present this commendation to Beth Alden. AICP in recognition of her 22 years of service to the Hillsborough Tran Transportation Planning Organization and for her steadfast dedication to improving transportation in the Tampa and Hillsborough County uh, region, especially for the most vulnerable members of our community. Your work has made it easier and safer to get around Tampa. Your retirement as the TPO's executive director, along with your experience, knowledge, and guidance, will be sorely missed. Over your long tenure, you have led an award-winning team of planners with a long-range vision of transportation system that is safe and efficient for all. You have directed acclaimed planning studies utilizing innovative resource methods and forged new interagency partnerships, allowing your work to be recognized as a pioneer in the use of market research in community and regional planning. So it is with great pleasure that the Tampa City Council present you with this well-earned commendation on this first day of February 2024 and with our wishes for your good health and happiness in your retirement and all your future endeavors. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you'd like to... Uh, oh, let's yeah, take and if you'd like to say anything, so that, that would be wonderful. Thank, sure. thank you. I, I just have to tell you, it's been it's been such a privilege and an honor uh, to work with Tampa City Council and, and the mayor over the years. Uh, we had some very tangible and significant accomplishments during the nine years that we worked together. One is insisting on a reinvention of the downtown interchange that focuses on the worst traffic and crash problems. Uh, without expanding it out to the size of multiple football fields with express toll lanes through the middle. Only by working together could we have done that. Um, one is establishing Vision Zero, a vision of zero traffic deaths, as a guiding principle for this community. There will probably always be traffic crashes, but they don't have to result in tragedies. And the last one that I wanted to mention to you is focusing our limited dollars for transportation on the folks who need it the most. Um, you have consistently insisted on putting um, safety enhancements at the top of the priority list and maintaining bus service and access to jobs um, for the people who need it. And putting those at the top of our priority list is so meaningful um, to so many people in this community. So keep up the good work. Keep working together. Um, it, 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 sometimes it doesn't look like it's making a difference, but, but it really is. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Mr. Carlson, as 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 she's running away, I I just I told you um, come back up here, <laughs> Beth. <laughs> you can't get away that easily. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for your years of service and your ideas and your vision. And as I said to you privately. I hope that um, now that you're not in this position, you'll give us your full vision and 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 continue to push for it um, uh, unrestrained from 
from any kind of political influence because I know you're a brilliant thinker and look forward to working with you. Councilman Vera. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just, you know, we, we worked together. I did a, I guess, a three-year tour of duty on the then MPO, and, and you were just a delight to work with. You're a very thoughtful person and, and a very compassionate person. You know that the, the real, you know, game changer that, that a well-funded, robust mass transit system is uh, for working people and, and, and for working class and marginalized communities, and you always show a great heart, and you're just a, a, a thoroughly delightful person. You're a musically inclined person, uh, which I find awesome. I mean, your, your, your uh, work is a, a, little, um, a little Lucinda Williams, a little Chris Christopherson. I think it's awesome, so, and that's, so, so I'm a fan. But, um, but again, just thank you for all you do. You're a wonderful person, and, and you wear many hats, and you wear them all well, so thank you. Council, Councilman Miranda, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I can't follow that. Councilman Hurtag. I just noticed, uh, you know, congratulations on everything that you've been able to do. I really have enjoyed working with you. But I'm looking out in the crowd, and if I, I see so many people who come today from so many different places, if you're here to support. Um, Miss Alden, if you wouldn't just, if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand or standing up and just saying hi. I mean, look at this. This is a great community of transportation advocates and activists throughout our community. And I think it speaks so highly to you and what you've been able to accomplish in the last eight years. And you are passing the torch to the rest of us. Um, and it is our job to keep going. So thank you so much for all you've done. Um, we will miss seeing you at the meetings, but I know you're not far away. Thank you. So just one observation. Um, Councilman Maniscalco when it got on TPO and you hung in for about 10 years. I was assigned to the TPO and you immediately announced your retirement. Coincidence? I think not. I don't know. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but for the very short, brief period of time that we got to work together, I appreciated your input and your insight into things. And, and you know, the, your, what I was very impressed with, and I, I think everybody that's listening to this that that holds a position, whether it's in government or not, was succession planning. You were so instrumental in planning and you know, providing notice and working within the organization to ensure a smooth transition as you retired, that, that your replacement was put in place and that we, that we wouldn't miss a beat. And you did that with absolutely outstanding skill uh, uh, and real, it was, and again, we didn't work together for long, but from, you know, for me watching that from coming in fresh, it was inspiring. And I, I, I rarely, I've been in, I've been in government service my entire adult, adult life. And I don't think I've ever witnessed a, a, that type of a transition done as well as, as, as what you orchestrated. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we now go to public comment. We have one registered speaker. We'll take that registered speaker first and go to in-person public comment. Yes, ma'am? They are not logged in. Okay, we will go to in-person public comment. If you wish to speak, uh, please uh, come up to the lectern, state your name. You have three minutes. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. My name is Sandra De Diego Sanchez. I live at 2705 Fig Street. Good morning, City Council. Good morning. Last week, I appeared before you to ask you to seriously consider the 2045 Comprehensive Plan. I understand that it is work in progress. However, there are some things I'd like to bring to your attention. The Tampa Housing Authority has a list of 23,000 people that are waiting for Section 8 housing. To qualify for Section 8 housing, you have to make below 60% AMI. The new comprehensive plan is for people that make between 80, 100 and 120 AMI. That means there are 23,000 people that will not be eligible to be considered for the plans on the comprehensive plan. I also wanted you to uh, mention to you about watching, looking for the tax breaks and the tax rebates that are coming. Last December 14th, at a CRA meeting, you had two developers come before you. LD&D asked for a $7.5 million grant, which is basically giving money back to a developer, and the Patel organization asked for a $9 million tax break. $16 million, almost with two 
developers asking for money, one of them, for, the, for 11 units out of their, out of their uh, project. 260 units, and out of that, they were going to make 11 of them workforce housing. That would have cost this city, if that had gone through, about 628000 per unit just to get those 11, those 11 uh, units that would be supposedly affordable. I ask that you think deep and hard before you put rubber stamp on the 2045 comprehensive plan. This plan will only help those that make 70,000 years and above, wasting millions of dollars in tax rebates and for a few and not for the 23,000 that are waiting. Again, I only ask that you research extensively when deciding on the benefits of this 2045 plan. This, the decision is yours. Please help the few, not just the many. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Next speaker. Good morning, Council. Julie McGill. I am back to talk about code enforcement and construction services in the city of Tampa. Um, you've all been given a handout. Those were public records I pulled on Jason Poppy, and this is already in the media and everything else, but I pulled those way before that. Um, a media person requested public records after I did, for, from 22 to 23, and she sent them to me, and not one of those are in there in the time, same time frame. So someone's tampering with public records. And I want to know how is this possibly legal. Um, second thing is chapter five is being rewritten and that, ha that has to do with code enforcement and inspection services as well. I'm on the city advisory board and I was told that, um, I was told at a meeting with J.C. Hutchinson, head of construction services, that they would absolutely go ahead and change the way they were doing things as far as trapping people with Zillow interior remodels, um, trespassing around into someone's backyard to find code violations, um, and self-entering their own proactive complaints. I was told that will not happen anymore because they were going to put it in Chapter 5 so you guys could see it. I was just on a Zoom meeting a few days ago and I was told now they are going to make that policy, which will not come before you now. So they're going to have free reign to keep doing whatever they've been doing and it's damaging our citizens. So I'm hoping that you can fix that. I don't know how, but if you can get that in front of yourselves and not let them put this as policy, because that's going to give them free reign. Um, so those are the two items that I wanted to discuss. Please look into the Jason Poppy. I sent each one of you the Excel spreadsheet with about 8,000 that the media requested, and you won't find one of those on there. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank Next you. speaker, please state your name. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Pastor Frank Williams, located at 1120 Scott Street, Tampa, Florida, 33602. You know, I really want to read something to y'all, but y'all don't give me enough time. Uh, if if y'all's clerk is here, I want to give a copy of this here, and I need to keep a copy for that set. You know, uh, you know, well, know where I'm located, and I came here last week and told y'all some guy put a lock on my church. Thought y'all would look into it for me. Y'all looked into it for me, and didn't do nothing for me. But I, this is what it's all about. I'm at paradise. Thank you, Father. Bay Area Legal Service. I'm going to read something to you. Bay Area Legal Service. Let me get my glass. I need plenty of help nowadays. I done got to be an old man. Bay Area Legal Service, Plant City, 701 Tillman Place, Suite 300. Okay, I done read that. Senior Applicant Program. Request Service. Provide fee, free, free advice and representation on civil Illegal matter to either eligible Hillsborough County resident, age 60 and over. Our senior applicant program can provide service to seniors without regard 
to income, although extended service to general provide to uh, those who would otherwise have limit, limit access to justice. And that's me. That's the way y'all treat me. Y'all only give me limit access to justice. But uh, our LO law advocate helped our client regard and retain their dignity, self-determination. I'm not going to read all this to y'all because I got this, and when I got it, I was surprised because nobody seemed to want to give me no help because I'm handicapped, I'm old, and, I, and I'm ugly. But the thing about it, I just thank God for another blessed day. I give him all the praise and all the glory. Regardless of how you all look at me, I thank God for the way he looked at me through Jesus Christ. And this is what it's all about. You all don't give us enough time to explain ourselves. I got this here. I want to give, give your clerk, let her get a copy of this, and she can give to anyone she please. But I got to keep this one because for my own recommendation. We got to do something for people that are not able to do nothing for themselves. Instead of letting them come around and put locks on my church and all that. Thank you very no, much, sir. No, I, I heard you. Nobody came and did nothing for me. I'm going, going by the church now, and a guy got a white truck there, and he done put new locks on the church and everything. Thank you very and, much. And I don't appreciate it. And I want to ask y'all, what, what y'all going to do about it? Next yes, sir. Thank you very much. Because I can't break in my own church. All right, next speaker, please state your name. Well, y'all need to give me some kind of answer. They'll just, just ring that bell on me and tell me to sit down. I know, I'm, I know when they sit down. I just want y'all to do something for me. Y'all sit the council, aren't you? Thank you very much, sir. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. <coughs> Connie Burton. I would like to thank uh, Miss Sandy for her layout of what is not happening or is happening in regards to the guise of affordable housing. Even the new development that is being built over on Hillsborough and 22nd Street with a substantial amount of an interest-free loan from the city, only six of the units, six, not 60, but six of the units will be three-bedroom. That would be opportunities for uh, larger families. But I'm here to talk about item number 48, which I thought was kind of interesting uh, when you're talking about racism and how racism is played out in this city. Uh, hopefully you have talked to some of your senior African-American staff members that is being uh, given immunity and they can speak freely. And then it would have been, have been good that if you could have talked to members of our community that have seen through policies that things that are supposed to happen in behalf of the African-American community has not happened. And it does not matter if all members of this council do not want to respect resolution 568, you wasn't naive, nor was you made to sign, nor did you, uh, if you had any disagreement when you was out over at the uh, convention center, you didn't express it. You said that you understood. And so in your understanding of that, I, want, I need you to understand this. As we celebrate African History uh, Month, Dr. King said the direct action was necessary for the very reason of this, to expose the contradictions. That you signed it, you said you understood it, but yet you're not going to act on it. You don't want to put any teeth to it. You don't want to acknowledge that there has been ongoing policies where in that resolution 568, you city leadership can take a stand in improving the economic condition in the African community by you taking the lead and tying grants that you have on the ground right now that will provide economic opportunity. You can spur the move forward by saying that you understand that to have a better relationship with the African community, you need to have a good relationship with the oldest civil rights organization in this country, the NAACP. We are going to continue to advocate long and hard to expose by direct action that you are willfully disregarding your word and resolution 568 
does matter. Just like the Emancipation Proclamation matter, so do that resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, yes, sir. Good morning, City Council. My name is Daryl Heitch. The definition of, of the word support says, bear all or part, bear all or part of the weight of something. So when we talk about support in this resolution, that's what the definition of support means. January 12, 1865, 20 black leaders from Savannah, Georgia, did a plight and they walked from Savannah, Georgia to Washington, DC. And when they walked to Washington, DC, they walked up there to have a conversation with General Sher Tecumseh Sherman. And when they had the conversation with Tecumseh Sherman, they said to him, on our way here, we noticed a bunch of vacant land. We noticed a bunch of land that was abandoned by the people who were fighting on the wrong side of the war. And sir, what we want you to understand is that our young men have died in this civil war. They have fought valiantly in this civil war. And they, these 20 ministers, as, as they stated, they went up there and they had a conversation with him and they said, can you at least go to the president of the United States and ask the president to give us that abandoned land, those what was stated as the 40 acres and a mule. He went and he said, hey, sir, can you go have a conversation as he was talking with the, the, the secretary of war, Mr. William Stanton and Tecumseh Sherman. And they, Mr. Sherman said, you know what? I'm going to take up this battle. And I'm going to go to the president, President Lincoln, and they issued field order number 15. Field order number 15 was the valiant conversation that was had with President Lincoln to say, hey, you know what? We will render that 40 acres and a mule. Now, we understand what happened as it related to that was the, pre the, the predecessor rescinded that. But what we're asking with resolution number 568 is for one of you to be like Tecumseh Sherman. One of you to understand what Tecumseh Sherman did when he got on his horse. Imagine the treacherous ride that he went through in the winter of 1865. Imagine the treacherous walk that those 20 black leaders went through and they said, hey, guess what? All we're asking is to give us something for the fight that we've done. All we've been coming up here asking for is to give us one person, one person who will go before the mayor and say, mayor, hey, listen, these, pe these people have been fighting. These people have lost lives. I just read sitting here a 14-year-old young man shot another kid on yesterday getting off the bus. See, we have an opportunity to win this race. And all we're asking is for one person to champion it. We have a, we have a saying in the community, in the black community, that say all skin folk ain't kin folk. So with that being said, maybe someone wants to pick up the mantle and go before the mayor and say, hey, mayor, listen, these people have been asking for something that we signed in September 3rd, 2020. And all we're asking for you to do is to just have that conversation. Get on your horse and go have the associated conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir, please state your name. Three minutes. Mantez not. One said, Huru, Huru means freedom in Swahili, and we as African people should always be thinking about our freedom. Also, want to say thank us word out there that someone lost their mother and want to send condolences. That's the hardest thing to do is to lose your mother. I don't care how old or how young she may be. That's a hard thing to do. On one item in this agenda, there's something about the chief diversity officer. Who is the chief diversity officer? Who's the chief diversity officer? It's a question. No one knows who the chief diversity officer is. No one inside the African community know who the chief diversity officer is. How is the person the chief diversity officer nobody knows who it is? That's with the CRA. Nobody inside the African community knew what was going on with the CRA until Sister Connie Burton got on the CRA. For years, I've been coming down here, over 30 years. I never knew what CRA was about because no one expressed it to the African community in that manner. Imagine me being here every single Thursday for 30 years and not knowing what the CRA do for African people. Who is the chief diversity officer? That can only happen in a city, whereas 
you can take something as offensive as a Gasparilla parade that African people showed objection to and actually grow the parade and grow the numbers of it. They tried to change the name, try to change, have some diversity in it, do different things, but it's right back to the Gasparilla Parade and they having fun with it. Oh, Negro whatsoever days, glory days. Things like that have to change. That can only happen in a city, whereas no issues have been answered to our needs, whereas you're talking riding a bicycle while black, walking while black, people getting kicked out of their homes because somebody else allegedly committed a crime. It's even happening before the person even went to court. It can only happen in a city as such, where a city that uses trickery, trickery because they think that all African people are stupid. So just give you an advance notice, like when you see black people, you see us, hey, we already know we're stupid. So now deal with us from that perspective. That, hey, maybe they get a little bit of sense. That can only happen before a city council that won't pick up a reparations issue, that won't say a single word about Palestine. Something horrific going on, and they won't say a single word about it. And insult people over it by inviting the opposition, the people who are committing the crimes. Thank you very that much, That have sir. to change. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Please state your name. Hello, um, my name is Thomas, and uh, I'm here to urge you to endorse the plant-based treaty. Um, the plant-based treaty is an environmental treaty that aims to put food systems at the center of uh, combating climate change, and um, the intensive farming of billions of animals yearly is the leading contributor to global greenhouse gases. Um, additionally, the enormous amounts of land and water needed to raise this exorbitant number of animals is driving widespread destruction of critical ecosystems uh, like rainforests, and it's the leading cause of deforestation worldwide. Uh, this treaty was created to coincide with the Paris Agreement and uh, bring awareness to this urgent environmental issue because at the current rate, the Earth cannot sustain our levels of animal protein consumption, and frankly, neither can we. Um, and your voice will help expand a growing movement calling for a halt to the widespread degradation of our planet's ecosystems and promote a shift to a healthier plant-based diet. Uh, please join the other 200 politicians and other United States cities such as uh, Boynton Beach and Los Angeles, as well as many other uh, cities worldwide that have already endorsed the treaty. Uh, we have a digital copy if you guys would like to endorse. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. Good morning, Karen Good morning. Cox with the Appleton Reese Law Firm. And I'm here on behalf of the South Neighborhood Association, a homeowners association for Harbor Island residents, and on behalf of the Harbor Island Community Services Association, the members of which are the owners of the non-residential parcels and units on Harbor Island. I'm here to emphasize the objections to agenda item number 39 and express their intent to continue to actively pursue their rights and interests in, that, in their opposition to that agenda item. Agenda item 39 concerns the proposal that the council authorize a $6.5 million contract with Clements for work in the channel district that includes work that will adversely impact the 4,800 residents and the owners, tenants, customers and clients of the businesses on Harbor Island. In particular, in particular, sorry, the scope of work includes the installation of two traffic lights on Franklin Street on the block leading to the Harbor Island Bridge. If constructed, the work would result in three pedestrian crossings, which also includes a mid-block crossing controlled by traffic signals on a span of 528 feet no other major metropolitan area has such a design in front of a tourist destination like the Convention Center and a major artery onto an island. The residents and businesses have made their objections to this unorthodox plan known to the city, including the mobility department. The plan creates an obvious obstacle for access to Harbor Island by car. The city has conceded that the negative impact on the Harbor Island stakeholders warrants a pause 
on this component of the contract. In the name of transparency and good communication, the city, including the mayor, has promised the Harbor Island stakeholders that the city will meet with them to reevaluate whether the work should proceed. No meeting date has been set as, as I stand here today. It's still in the works. Yet, I'm here because while it has been represented that the work on Franklin Street is on hold, pending consideration of the very real and valid concerns of the Harbor Island stakeholders, council is being asked to approve a co the contract funding the work before any meeting has even been scheduled. Uh, executing this contract undermines the promise that the Harbor Island objections will be considered. The city council should not authorize the allocation of funding when the city stated position, a position that I expect the mobility department will reiterate when agenda item 39 is reached, is that no decision has been made to undertake the work. The duality of the city's actions and words belies confidence in the Harbor Island stakeholders Thank that they actually much. have a seat at the table. Thank you Thank very you. much, ma'am. Yes, sir, please state your name. Good morning, my name is Nathan Hagan. Um, last week I wrote an op-ed in the Tampa Bay Times that was critical of, what, of our city's legislative body I accomplished up until now on affordable housing. Um, I had some calls for people who recommended that I, I maybe say more. <clears throat> One point of feedback I got was that I wasn't telling the truth, and that's fair. There was a glaring omission. I'm immensely proud of what my Tampa City Council did last year to put aside 30% of our CRA dollars towards affordable housing. That was a historic investment in Tampa, tens of millions of dollars that will go a long way to helping many families. The emergency rent subsidy program genuinely helped people. This body stepped up in those opportunities. This council deserves credit for their accomplishments, and I didn't give it. I was unpleasant too. For anyone who missed it, the title was, Where are the Tampa City Council's 10,000 Affordable Homes? But the op-ed wasn't a story about 10,000 homes. It was about failure. How the mayor failed, how the city council failed, how our entire community failed, including me and many others, have failed to change the trajectory of this crisis, and how we can drive change. While I got a lot of positive reactions, some of the negative reactions I've gotten since it was published tell me this, that the math still has not sunk in yet, that people still think this is a political sideshow. $50 million at $250,000 per unit is 200 units. God, I hope I find out that I'm wrong at the workshop at the end of this month. I hope somehow we leverage that into 20,000 homes but my math says it's 200. It's sorely needed. It's worth celebrating. Let's do it again next year. But that's it, 200 homes. Half a percent of what we need, and our needs only grow. A rounding error. I'm in despair about what we've accomplished. We all should be. That's why I wrote the op-ed, and that's why I don't want to see any mission accomplished banners. I choose to turn that despair into inspiration. That's why I'm here today. And that's why I'll continue to be here. Help give me hope. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. <clears throat> All right, it'll come up on the uh, big screen, but we can see your map. Carol Ann Bennett, I'm glad to hear Nathan apologize for attacking you about affordable housing. Um, I've seen you work tirelessly on the housing crisis. However, he blamed this crisis on a handful of South Tampa donors. Political donations are public record. In reality, developers contribute the most to local elections, sometimes more than everyone else combined. Growth happens where developers make the most profit. From 2010 to 2020, South Tampa had the highest growth rate of new projects in the whole city. Why? Concrete, drywall, and labor cost the same everywhere in the city. Land prices vary wildly. Rent and home prices vary wildly. Rent developers build where they make the most profit. That's why the University Planning District only grew 1% in 10 years. Why isn't EMB fighting against the harm this causes? This is where we can increase mass transit. This is where rents are not inflated by flood insurance. 
NIMBY IS IGNORING THE SAME AREAS THE DEVELOPERS ARE IGNORING. INSTEAD, THEY, lo they LASER FOCUS ON THE MOST ENVIRONMENTALLY VULNERABLE PART OF THE CITY WITH THE HIGHEST GROWTH RATE, INSISTING THE SOLUTION IS ALWAYS MORE APARTMENTS IN SOUTH TAMPA, WHICH THEY SAY WILL RESULT IN AFFORDABILITY. I FACT-CHECKED THIS. A NEW BUILDING THAT MEETS THEIR GOALS CHARGES $23.50 FOR A SMALL STUDIO, ZERO BEDROOMS. IF YOU WANT BEDROOMS, YOU MUST PAY UP TO $62.50 A MONTH. WHY ARE THEY FIGHTING FOR THIS? I AM DISAPPOINTED THAT YIMBY DOES NOT CARE THAT ADUs AND SEMINOLE HEIGHTS DO NOT PROVIDE HOUSING BECAUSE THEY ARE SHORT-TERM RENTALS. THEY DON'T TALK ABOUT THE ENTIRE APARTMENT COMPLEXES THAT ARE MOVING TO SHORT-TERM RENTALS. I AM DISAPPOINTED THEY DON'T TALK ABOUT THE BULLDOZING OF MISSING MIDDLE IN SOUTH TAMPA. WE NEED TO STOP MAXIMIZING FOOTPRINTS AND STOP McMansioning OUR WORKING CLASS SOUTH TAMPA NEIGHBORHOODS. THEY DO NOT TALK ABOUT THE LOSS OF TREE CANOPY CAUSED BY THIS SETBACK TO SETBACK BUILDING THAT LEAVES NO ROOM FOR TREES, THE VAST MAJORITY OF WHICH ARE ON SINGLE FAMILY LOTS. THEY ONLY TALK ABOUT RENTALS, EVEN THOUGH HOUSING JUSTICE ORGANIZATIONS FIGHT FOR, QUOTE, HOME OWNERSHIP AS A WAY FOR PEOPLE OF COLOR TO BUILD WEALTH FOR THEIR COMMUNITIES AND FAMILIES. THEY DON'T TALK ABOUT CORPORATE LANDLORDS WHO WILL OWN CLOSE TO 40% OF ALL HOMES IN THE U.S. BY 2030. WHEN NEIGHBORHOODS FIGHT TO BUILD 40 AVERAGE UNITS IN A FOUR-STORY BUILDING, YIMBY FIGHTS FOR DEVELOPERS TO BUILD 40 ENORMOUS UNITS IN A 20-STORY BUILDING. I AM DISAPPOINTED THAT YIMBY, WHOSE sincerity, SINCERITY I DO NOT DOUBT, HAS TUNNEL VISION ON A VERY COMPLICATED PROBLEM AND ONLY TALKS ABOUT WHAT IS HUGELY PROFITABLE TO BUILDERS. SUPPLY AND DEMAND IS NOT A PRO-HOUSING AGENDA. IT IS A PRO-PROFIT AGENDA. THANK YOU. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. Good morning, Council. My name is Bishop Michelle B. Patty. I'd like to say to you, Councilwoman Gwendolyn Gwen Henderson, you had you and your whole family have my sincere condolence. And I'd like to let you remember, I know you know, but I want you to know that Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Take that with you. I'm here today on a subject that I hope has not been lost. On yesterday, Tampa made national news. There was a young man that took a gun and fired into a car that the bullet hit a four-year-old child. This car was a safety place for this child. The child was riding with the family, and with no fault of her own, this man, for whatever reason, shot into the, gun, uh, into the car. They said it was road rage. On last Friday, I don't know if you all are aware that there was two juveniles, 14 and 16, at an alternative school. They got into a scuffle, and later, one child shot the other child. So as we see, and then I heard the young man say uh, this morning that someone shot someone getting off the bus. So our children's safety should be at the forefront. I don't care how many emails you got, uh, what was going on. This council has to get some courage because we're headed into the, uh, uh, what they call it, the, uh, the kids finna get out of school, spring break. We're headed to spring break. And we know with spring break, there, that's the problem in itself. So this council need to think more about being proactive and doing something now. And the, yes, I understand y'all are going to put more money into parks and recreation, but the kids and the people that's wreaking the habits, they're not the ones that's going to be going to the parks or the recreation or looking for jobs. They're going to be the ones that's outside waiting on the nice kids to come out where they can shoot them. So it's nice to have these buzzwords about racial profiling and all these kind of things, but simply to do nothing is an injustice to the safety and well-being of our children. So I'm just asking that this council do not put it on the back burner. I've sat here and listened at speaker after speaker, but no one is talking about our children, which is our future. It seemed that it's gone away because you put it on pause. How long is the pause? And what are we doing during the pause? What are we going to come up with? What a solution? No, the curfew would not have solved every problem, but a 14, 15-year-old kids do not need to be on the street. I heard this morning about sexual, uh, the slave trade and what's going on. 
So would we want our children out there where they can be snatched up by pimps, uh, murdered in the streets? I mean, let's look at, with common sense, what we need to do to move in the right direction. Let's have a conscience when it comes to our children. Our children... No, they don't pay taxes right now, but they are our future, and we need to look at them as such. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. Good morning, Keila McCaskill. Councilwoman Henderson, I know we're not supposed to address them directly, but my sympathy to you, I just sat in that seat, and it is definitely something I've never experienced in my life, so I pray that you have the unexplainable peace of God in this journey. So this morning I'm here, um, we're all aware of our need for housing. And recently we witnessed where the mayor had a very aggressive, if you want to use that word, goal of 10,000 affordable units. And then it, during the campaign they announced that they had over half that goal in terms of numbers. And when that data was broken down, we found out that in fact, we only had 548 approximately. What I want to know is that because of the need that was reported recently, we had over a 26,000 unit deficit as it relates to affordable housing. We heard from our leader of the city that they had met the goal of over 10,000 units and we found out we only had 548. We've needed these affordable housing units since 2017. There was over 150, 175 people moving here a day. We didn't see it until later. So we already had a deficit before the announcement was made. We're in a situation, we're in a state of crisis as it relates to affordable housing. I want to know what's the plan. City Council is the only body that can hold the administration accountable. I believe when you're in a, in a, in a crisis, when it's an emergency, all hands are on deck. I'm asking that you all, prior to the workshop, I'm asking that you dig deep into the resources, the people that develop in this city, the experts that's done some amazing things in this city, reach out to where funding is, reach out to everybody outside of the staff to find out how you can best represent in a state of an emergency. Find out beyond your resources, because I know you're here limited. I say if you do this, I know they said it's a part-time job, but if you're doing it right, it's really full-time. But I'm asking you to have from, from the, the moral compass on the inside of each one of you to really dig in and find out how you can contribute in this workshop. To know when you're hearing BS, you know, like 5,000 units when you really have 548. To know when you're hearing BS and when it's the actual truth and what contributions you and or nonprofits, other developers, even if they're um, market or at, at market rate developers, find out their expertise in the plan and what could happen in terms of development to help meet this goal in all areas, not just East Tampa. We need Sulphur Springs. We need some in West Tampa. We need some in East Tampa. And I'm not sure how much is in South Tampa, but I'll say even if it's in South Tampa, but I think the dirt's too expensive. But find out where the best results can come from Get their opinion so they can help you form the best decision and you represent your constituents in, at your best, at your absolute best, because you would have went beyond the scope of the staff and whatever data they gave you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, please state your name. Good morning, Stephanie Pointer. I'll put this up here for you. You see that? That's a penny. If we cut that penny into a hundred little tiny pieces, you would get seven of those. Uh, number 30 is a development agreement for a project that's going to probably net related group $210 million. And they're going to give us seven pieces, if we cut this penny up into 100 pieces, to fix a park that another developer destroyed. I have a problem with this development agreement, huge problem with this development agreement. They've already come to you once. I don't even know how they get to come back to you less than a year later because the projects look the same. It looks like a mirror. Um, that's number 30 on today. Uh, number 27, we've got this $425,000 coming out of the, um, the uh, CIT funding for a light. Somebody else found some money. Since 2006, there's been a light needed at Tyson and West Shore. 2006. For two and a half years, Elise Batzel has been trying to negotiate with the city of Tampa to get a red light at that juncture. They are willing to commit to doing all kinds of stuff to get that stuff done, and they're even willing to finance it. But yet this, this red light pops up, and there's four corners there that have nothing on them. I'm trying to figure out why their red lights just pop up. $425,000 is a lot of money. Uh, number 40 is the bonding capacity. 
Um, you know, during the budget process, there was like $16 million approved for a fire station. Then it comes back a couple weeks later. It's over a million, it's over a hundred million dollars. And I'm like, when do we stop the scope creep? When do we stop? It's in, in the red light. Wasn't in the budget. So here we go. We're spending money that wasn't in the budget. It's just like my children. They want to spend money that aren't, <laughs> it, that it's not in the budget because it's not their money. We have got to do better. I don't spend money that I can't afford to spend. Do you operate with your pocketbooks like that? I guarantee you Charlie doesn't. I guarantee you Charlie doesn't spend money he doesn't have. I could use the rest of you too, but I know, I know that how, how tight Charlie is. Um, number 19, 204 East Amelia. If we're selling land that belongs to the city, then it, that money needs to go to housing. I'm sorry, but it does. Um, and the missing middle. Nobody's ever come here asking for the missing middle. Nobody has ever, I've never seen anybody bring to council the missing middle. I own the missing middle in Louisville, Kentucky. I have a little four bedroom, a, a little 2,700 square foot with four units in it, one bedroom units, one bath units. That's the missing middle. Nobody wants to build it here because they cannot max out their profitability. I've asked for it. I've had developers come to me and say, hey, we want to put 42 units in there. Hey, and I'm like, okay, great. How much are they going to cost? Oh, they're going to be $500,000. How big are they? 2,500 square feet. Well, let's make them 1,500 square feet and make them $300,000. Oh, no, I can't make any money doing that. So whose fault is it that we're not doing the missing middle? It's greed, folks. It's all about greed. And we have to look at that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. You are our final speaker, I believe. Go ahead, sir, please state your name. Come on up. Good morning, council members. Uh, I'd like to speak on the uh, item number 36, the Parish Street Houses. That's a public hearing, sir? Excuse me? That's going to be a public hearing later this afternoon. Oh, this afternoon? Today. But you no, have actually, an opportunity. It, could, it depends on time. Well, it could be in the morning, but I know it says 10 a.m., but you know, the, the agenda gets busy, but you'll have an opportunity to speak then and we can, we'll bring you up to talk about it. And you say it's this afternoon. Well, we have a closed session at 11 o'clock. I don't know if we're going to get to it before lunch, but it, it, it will be today. I don't know what time, depending on how quickly we move. But you'll have an opportunity to speak at it then, sir. All right. The issue affects the neighborhood. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you. All right, sir. You are the last. Good morning, Council. Don Snipes, Vice President, Local 754. Last uh, January 11th, I spoke on the bonding issue before it was continued. The union and city firefighters were not satisfied that the item did not pass when it was last heard. We can only look forward. By remaining focused and committed to the public and our firefighters, the union recognizes these dangerous delays. We continue to be mission-oriented on saving lives and property while we continue to be met with the continuous delays from our staff and city leaders. We understand that there is a bonding presentation being presented just before our item in reference to fire station bonding. We cannot put a dollar value on life. Whether it's a resident, an employee, a visitor, or public servants, the union continues to be vocal on these life-saving initiatives because they affect not only the taxpayers' lives, but firefighter lives as well. The bonding presentation may scare the public and or the council with its dollar figures, but again, a person's life should never have a cost placed on it. Bonding for a public safety fire station's fire equipment should be unanimous. A yes vote on issues that concern saving lives and property should garner the support of all elected leaders. Voting in support of the fire station bonding item will ultimately save lives and property for future generations. The city of Tampa is dangerously behind in fire and emergency services. The union has been sounding this alarm since 2017 and before. These deficiencies cannot continue. Basically, the bonding presentation by staff is going to alarm the public and council on how much debt we owe. Had this item passed on January 11th, we would not even be discussing this today. The city's bonding process in the past have rarely met with as much resistance as this issue concerning public safety. 
the further continuance of this item or to not pass it at all is only going to continue us moving decades behind from a firefighter's perspective. We are letting down the public. We are letting down the visitors. We are letting ourselves down by putting public safety in on the back burner. We are a city of champions. It is time to step up. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes public comment. We're going to go into a request for, uh, by the public for reconsideration of legislative matters. I see no one. We're going to go to our uh, consent agenda. Councilmember Vieira, would you mind taking public safety four through seven? Yes, sir. I move uh, items four through seven, please. We have motion from Councilmember Vieira, second Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Councilmember uh, Henderson, eight and nine. We have a motion from Councilmember Henderson, second Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilmember Hertek, 10 and 11. Yes, um, for the shortest Sorry. public works uh, <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I move items 10 and 11. We have a motion from Councilmember okay. Hertek. We have a second Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Councilmember Carlson, 13 through 25. I'm sorry, I, I would like to vote separately on 19 and 22. All right. And 25. Okay. All right, do everything else. Um, break, break so I'd like to move uh, 13 through 18. We have a motion. 20, 21, 23, 24. We have a motion from Council Member Carlson, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Which are the ones that you want to vote separately on, sir? Uh, 19. Okay. Um, did you say 25? 22 and 25? Yeah, I would just like to I, I would just like to vote separately in 19. All right, we have a motion from who would like to make a motion on item number 19? So move. We have a motion from uh, Councilmember Vieira. Do we have a second? Second. That's the alley that's the part of the alley we're selling at uh, I think the Fraser. Microphone. Yeah. Microphone. Yes. Microphone. 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 <laughs> we have a motion from who? Vier Councilmember Vieira. Second, second Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, I yes, opposed. Council member Carlson is the no. Motion carried with Carlson voting no. And then number 22, I'll just say, um, on the surface, it's remediation of a brownfield in the aquarium parking lot. Uh, but there are a lot of rumors about um, certain developers um, wanting to develop this property. The aquarium lease, as I read it in the file, runs out 2030, I think. Um, uh, I, I'm in favor of remediation, obviously, but I think the administration, if they plan to develop this property and sell it, they need to be transparent about it. And so for that reason, I'm going to vote no. We have a motion from who to move 22? I move Motion from Councilmember Clendenin, and Senator Councilman Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Councilmember Carlson with the no. Motion carried with Carlson voting no. And I'd just like to vote separately on 25. All right. Can I get a motion for 25? Uh, so moved. Motion from Councilmember Vieira. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Councilmember Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carried. With Carlson voting no. All right. Councilmember Clendenin, 26 to 28. I move items 26, 27, 28. We have a motion from Councilmember second. Clendenin. We have a second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Councilmember Miranda, do you want to set the public hearings for 29, yes, 30, and 30? Chairman, I move public hearing set for 29 on April the 4th of 2024, 10 a.m., item number 30. On February the 8th, 2024, 5:01, and uh, March uh, 24, 10:30, if possible, if it passes the first. And item number 31, uh, on February the 15th, the 2024, 10:30 a.m., if possible, for March uh, 24, at uh, March 7th of 2024, 10:30, passes the first hearing. Wait, do we have a we have Simon Councilman Vieira, Councilmember Hertag? Um, I just want to say that we've gotten a lot of email on number 30, and all we are doing is setting the date for the public hearing. So I highly recommend that if people have something to say about it, they come on that date. February 8th, 5:01 p.m. I don't know where on the agenda, but it'll it'll come that evening. That's next Thursday, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602, third floor, which is this room. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We are going to open, uh, at this time, we can open all the public so hearings. Move, Chairman. Motion from Council Member uh, Miranda, second from Council Member uh, Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If, uh, let me see, non-quasi, all right. 
we don't have to swear anybody in. These are non-quasi-judicial. So item number 32 is a second reading, and there's also a, um, there's a substitute for it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Council. Susan Johnson, Velez, Legal Department. Um, this is a uh, public hearing on our second reading of an ordinance to establish the Gas Works Community Development District um, pursuant to petition filed by um, the petitioner. And I just wanted to make note that on January 30th, um, we submitted a memo um, attaching a substitute ordinance. At the uh, first reading hearing on January 11th, it was mentioned that there was a typographical error on the ownership and maintenance matrix that was attached to the ordinance. And we have corrected that to change the reference to sewer to stormwater. And the revised matrix now shows that all existing stormwater and all proposed stormwater will be the maintenance responsibility of the city of Tampa. So I believe the petitioner's representative is here for a um, presentation, after which uh, we would request that the attached substitute ordinance be considered at the second reading. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from council members? I see none. Do we have a representative for item 32? Yes, sir. Please state your name. Good morning, city council members. My name is Vivek Babar. I'm with the law firm of Straley Robin Verker. We work with the petitioner as well as Infomark, who prepared the petition. Uh, we're here to answer any questions. We are happy to go into a presentation if you'd like one. We've done a few presentations on this project in the past, um, but again, happy to answer any questions regarding the project or the uh, petition itself. Any questions for the petitioner? Does anybody wish to see another presentation? No. Or do we? All right. We'll go to the uh, public. Is <laughs> there anybody? Not. Is there anybody registered for these public hearings, ma'am? Okay. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number 32? Motion we have a motion Second. closed from Council Member Clendenin, and Council Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Council Member Miranda, would you mind reading the substitute yes, for 32? Yes, sir. Item number 32, file number C, DD 24 slash 2207. Substitute ordinance being presented for second reading adoption. An ordinance in the city of Tampa, Florida, establishing the Gas Works Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190, Florida Statue of the Property Generally Encompassed by Nebraska Avenue to the west, 15th Street to the east, Salmon uh, Expressway to the south, and 5th Avenue to the north, describing the external boundaries of the district, describing the functions and powers of the district, designating the initial members of the district board of supervisors, providing for severability, providing an effective date. We have a motion from Council Member Miranda, second Council Member Vieira, please record your vote. <coughs> motion carried unanimously with Carlson being absent at vote. Thank you very much. Item number 33. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Go Kamari ahead. Kamaria pettis Malcolm from the legal department. Good morning. Item number three is an ordinance for city council's consideration for second reading um, an ordinance for to eliminate, to, I'm sorry, to delete chapter five of the Florida Building Code in order to align the Florida building, the chapter five of our local code with the Florida Building Code, which is found in Florida Statute 553.73. This ordinance also allows the department to adopt local administrative and technical amendments for the Florida Building Code. And staff made a presentation at the first reading regarding the ordinance. All right, any questions or comments from council members? Ms. Feely, do you have anything to add? Good morning, Council. Um, J.C. Hutchinson, the building official, is traveling today, and I just wanted to be available should Council have any questions. J.C. and Kamara provided a full presentation at first reading. This is us aligning and realigning Chapter 5 uh, to the current edition of the Florida Building Code. Okay. Any questions or comments? No? All right. Do we have anybody in the uh, public that wishes to speak on item number 33? We have a motion closed from Council Member Clendenin, okay. second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Council Member Vieira, would you mind reading item number sure. 33? Yes, sir. My pleasure. I move an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, mm -hmm. deleting in its entirety this Tampa or City of Tampa Code of Ordinances, Chapter 5, Building Code, Code, adopting local administrative and technical amendments of the Florida Building Code, reorganizing the entire City of Tampa Code of Ordinances, Chapter 5, Building Code, to align with the Florida Building Code, providing for severability. Uh, providing an effective date. We have a motion from Council Member Vieira, second from Council Member Clendenin. Please record your vote. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, sir. No, number 34. 
Good uh, morning, Eric Cotton, Development Coordination. This is second readings on the July cycle for Chapter 27 um, amendments. I did a presentation, or a brief one, at a previous meeting. If the council has any questions, I'm going to have to answer them for you all. Yes, sir. I have a question regarding the, um, the notice requirements mm -hmm. and the sign size. I saw at least one email, perhaps more, um, regarding the, uh, the size uh, and con concerns that, I know this is at second reading, that they were not going to be in, conf in not conformity, but are they going to be the larger notice signs that we discussed? Because I saw basically what was there before. I forgot the measurements, like 18 by... 24. 18 yeah. by 24 so now. The intent is the code. I mean, we, we left, if you all recall, the reason why we left the 18 by 24, that's what was in the code previous. Um, during COVID, we were tasked with, because of the shrinking budget in the city had fiscal impact from, from COVID-19, we had the 24 by 36 signs. We made them a little bit smaller to the 18 by 24 as a cost savings. That was one of the things that the administration wanted us to find ways to save costs. If you recall, um, Eileen Rosario, who was, who's one of my staff members, um, received one of the awards for the ATU Employee of the Month. That was one of her cost-saving suggestions, and that was one of the things that council awarded her the, um, the ATU for. Um, again, this is the signs are going to be 24 by 36. This is a mock-up of the sign itself has not been finalized yet. That does work right now. If you were to take your phone and put it on the... QR code, even on the screen, it should bring up the Acela map, and then you go from there for everything. Um, we do have estimates from, we have gotten our estimates. This again, you know, the estimates for 100 signs is $1,600 roughly. And as you can see, not trying to cover up the person who's, um, the estimate is for 36 by 24. So that's the size sign we are going to be having. All right. I don't want to see these small signs that we've had before that were white and difficult no, to see. No, they're going to be they're going to be the yellow signs. They're going to be the three feet by two feet. Yes. And they're going to have the QR code and they're going to be yellow. Correct. Just like just like this. The ones the ones that we brought. Abby and I did the presentation yes. a year ago. Whenever okay. whenever we were here. Because That's, the previous signs, the, the the previous design, is very difficult to read very difficult to see and then you know the uh, the ink the marker fades with the sun and the rain and at least this has a QR code so if it fades they can still scan it so correct so this is the sign this is the sign Absolutely. this is a typical of the sign that it's going to right. be yes miss feely if i can jump in for just one minute um you know we entered into a very collaborative um approach in bringing back the good neighbor notice and we're very much committed to following through on those items the code states a minimum. That does not mean that that is our intention. We have proceeded with ordering, designing, and bringing back exactly what we shared with you. Um, if there's a different message at this time and you want that language to be changed to be a minimum of 24 by 36, you can put that back to first reading and suggest that change in between first and second reading. It is our intent, as we know, these signs will be all over the city. Um, that we are going to follow through with what was presented to you. It is not our intent to go to the minimum, but the minimum language in the code allows, should circumstances change, that that would obviously be brought back before you, and then something would be modified. But we could make them five feet by 10 foot with this language in the code, which is not our intention. Our intention is to follow through with what we brought to you, that's what the order demonstrates, that's what the design demonstrates, and that's what we're here today uh, to confirm with you. Okay, Council Member Clendenin, Council Member Hurtag. Yeah, I, uh, Ms. Feely, I, I hear you and I understand the, the intentions, and but I think the community was expecting um, the minimums to be increased. I think I was expecting the minimums to be increased. And while our, you know, there's gonna be a time when both you and I are gonna be drifting on somewhere in, in, on the beach sipping a, an adult beverage and not even thinking about the city of Tampa and other people are going to be sitting in these seats and even the, so the best intentions of you and I are not necessarily going to carry over to those new people so I think as we codify these things it needs to be it needs to be very clear because we've seen we've seen that in the past so I, I mean I I think we should pursue um, uh, putting that portion back into first reading so that we can get those minimums and, and again retaining the minimum uh, language, but having the minimum language uh, increased to the uh, 36, 36 to the 36. Yeah. Council Member Hurtag. 
Thank you, and I agree with Council Member um, Clendenin. Uh, you know, I understand that it's a cost savings and it's something that needs to be done in an emergency, but the mayor has a really large leeway in an emergency. So that's something that could happen in an emergency, and I agree um, we should absolutely change the minimum to 24 to 36. Cost savings is not a priority for me when regarding this. It's $1,600 of a $1.9 billion budget, and I believe that this is what the community and the builders, so everyone worked on this and agreed with it. So I, I don't think it's a good idea to, to shrink that size and leave it where it is. Uh, and again, I believe in an emergency situation that the mayor has powers in order to change that. And if not, then it's just something that we could change as a council um, because this is, these are our rules. So, council member Miranda, then I'll go to. Now, I've heard council two council members speak on it, and, and I believe they're correct. Uh, it sometimes, the problem is that when you when you have these signs, they're usually signs that are in the neighborhoods, and people are today driving and, and they're, they're looking for other things, and sometimes they don't see a sign. But the yellow certainly helps the color, because the yellow and white, and you say, what is that? It might even scare you for a while in the beginning. But I think that the size difference will make a difference to people who say, listen, I didn't see the sign. That takes that out of the quotation that you didn't see the sign. The equation that you didn't see the sign, I should say. The sign is there. You can visibly see it from half a block away. That's all. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Wells. Thank you. Good morning, Kate Wells. For the legal department, just one comment. I don't disagree with what council was saying. Right now, if this ordinance is approved on second reading today, it goes into effect March 2nd. If we go back to first reading, we then delay the effectiveness and the ability to implement the signs. So one thing for council's consideration is if you want it to move forward with second reading today so that we have it implemented and effective as of March 2nd, we could consider that amendment, add that amendment to the next cycle of text amendments. So just, I'm just, it's an option just because delaying first reading or delaying the, the approval today merely delays implementation of that section of the code. Yes. Um, it, thank you. Uh, can I add to that can, real quick? I'm sorry. I, I apologize for not being in chambers today. Um, I agree with what Ms. Wells is suggesting. If we did go ahead and go forward, I think Eric and I have been working the past couple of weeks to look at our existing inventory and tee up the new inventory because we want these new signs out as soon as possible. Um, one thing, a uh, friendly amendment to what Kate was saying is we could probably run out of cycle the change to put the minimum back in and, and bring that back to you um, as soon as possible. And we could develop what that schedule would be, but we wouldn't necessarily have to wait um, and then have it run with the January cycle, which wouldn't go into effect till July. I think we could run it out of cycle and bring that back to you faster, but proceeding today does allow us to get started um, in, in just a little over 30 days with the new signs being out around the city. Yes, ma'am, Councilor. Yeah, I still have a question for Ms. Wells. Um, <clears throat> it seems to me that we could take this portion out and go forward with the rest of it, but there's nothing that prevents us from from using these 24 by 36 signs now, is there? No. Oh, sorry. Well, no, that's <laughs> fine. It's your implementation. No, ma'am. So, we're, we're, they're, they're okay. on, as, yeah. I'm hoping that as we will use up the smaller signs sure. before March 2nd, yeah. and we'll roll out the newer version of the signs, similar to this with the bigger mm -hmm. ones, and the only because the code won't be implemented yet, we'll have to add a separate line on here to comply with the code as of today. But everything else will be functional on there. Okay. So it wouldn't slow it down. And as Abby was saying, we could come back if you adopt it today and then come back probably within a month or so with a, with first reading to just amend that portion of the code. I would be personally so. more comfortable with pulling that section out and coming back with it in a month, um, oh. personally. Uh, oh. But it's going to be up to the rest of the council. Um, because since we can already use them as is, I'm just, I'd be more comfortable if it was codified. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Dana Crosby, call your city attorney's office. Um, I just wanted to mention that is the minimum, so we can have it any size larger, as Eric was saying. 
but also of, of more importance is the fact that the language that we've added adds that digital QR code. So if you remove this entirely at this time, then we'll just have to continue using the white signs we're using now. Mm. So, yes, sir, Mr. Shell. I'm sorry to interrupt. You can, council can continue, but I just want to remind you that this is a public hearing, and you still have the opportunity before you make any decisions. I suggest you hear from no, the public. That's yes, true. council okay. member Clendenin. So I, I guess I'm kind of confused with where we are because I don't know why I was under the impression that we had agreed to 36. I mean, that's, that's where I, I kind of felt that that was the, after public, after the, again, that collaborative agreement with the, with the users and with the city, that 36 was the number that we'd agreed to. So how did we get 24 in here? The um, Dana Crosby call you again. The current language is that the sign must be at least 18 by 24. And then in our discussions, we agreed the yellow signs are going to be larger and they're going to be the 36. So why didn't that, because that, that was our agreement, why didn't that make it into the documentation? To amend it to be a minimum of 24 um, by 36. Uh, your staff just thought that if there was ever an emergency or a need, you can, if it's well, at least 18 by 24, it can be any size bigger than that. Yeah, there we go. So is, isn't this kind of, since, I mean, legally, is there, could this be considered a Scribner's thing to change that 24 to 36 and at this point, uh, our de minimis impact? Because all of our public discussions, everything we've done has been 36. Yes, I mean, and, the, and the new yellow signs that have been ordered are 36. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, clearly the intent of everybody was this was 36. So why why couldn't we just say this was a Scribner's error and a de minimis impact and change this to 36? Then we could. We could run this as a Scribner's error since it was a change that wasn't made in this document right. that is it substantive. I mean, without objection? Yeah, Council Member Miranda, you know, we're here for the public. Let me ask a question that maybe no one should ask. Have these signs already been ordered? No, sir. We're okay. They, this, so there's no this, loss to the public and, and lost money on, on printing a 24 by 36 sign. Correct. Where we're not, what the stage we're at right now right, is getting, right, we have two bids from two different companies. Correct. And, and, and if I recall, this started out sometime <coughs> back, maybe a year or two back, if I recall, sometime back. That is correct. And it came about really by change of nature, but also the county, when they post their signs for something, it were 36 by 24, or right at it. County signs are larger, and the county oh, yes, actually what I'm charges. Saying, or right at it. it the, the county actually charges the applicant to post the All sign. right, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's have some public comment. Yes, ma'am. Public comment. Please say your name. Good morning, Stephanie Pointer. I want everyone to know that my email this morning was not the first time I asked that question. Um, I actually asked that question when it was on the agenda last time, and I talked to staff about it. <coughs> staff assured me that this is what's going to happen. And you know what? We have to trust staff. I mean, I can't run around calling people liars all the time, but my neighborhoods are questioning it. So at that point, I have to bring it forward to you guys. I'm okay with a Scribner's error. I'm okay with it waiting a couple weeks. I'm okay with whatever you guys think is best in this situation, but my neighborhoods, um, they, they had questions about it. And you know what? I'm not the end all be all. Just like you guys, I represent other people. So when, but I did ask, I read it when it came out for first reading and I did ask and, and you know what, I, staff explained it to me and I was like, okay, because you know, we, I'm not going to stand up there and call uh, up here and call them liars because I don't think that's what's happened. I think that there, there was a good intent and I don't know why it can't be a Scribner's error. I mean, I think that's a, a brilliant idea because it was the intention and what actually happened shouldn't shouldn't stop this but please don't stop the rest of what's in this cycle period i mean i don't know why we can't approve everything but the sign of the size the size of the sign today the size of the sign can come back but they need to order them and get them taken care of but that's my opinion and i just wanted you to know that i don't i, I don't like lobbing bombs last minute but you know when my neighborhoods are upset about it i have to i have to you know, pay attention and follow along and, and bring up the, the points. And I think this is an important point. And I don't think anybody did this deceptively. I just think that everybody had the best intentions. And we do appreciate everybody working together on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Please state your name. Um, good morning, Council. Steve McElhaney. You, you may recall in the discussions, the staff brought in uh, a series of signs. And uh, the discussion was that with the QR code 
and with the geo positioning uh, that was, was also being provided, that you all had the discussion about this is the size that you wanted. And the, the, other, um, the other part of that discussion was the proliferation of signs and the overwhelming nature of them uh, was to be part of that consideration. And there were several components uh, that the staff was working with to also include all the information that you wanted, uh, including that, you know, the, the QR code and all that. So uh, whatever direction you want to go in uh, is fine, but there was a discussion about it, and you all did point to the staff and tell them, go with that size. Um, so anyway, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, but again, we want to move forward. We agreed, you know, the building community went ahead. We met with the neighborhood associations and we agreed on the, the increase in the notices and the size of the signs and all of that. So there's nothing on the development side that is opposing this. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Ms. McCaskill, are you coming up? No? All right. Um, so on the suggestion of Councilmember Clendenin regarding the Scrivener's error, would it be possible to bring it back after lunch and and do it like that so we don't further delay this? Um, Dana Crosby, call you again. Another idea is because I, we were looking at the title, and the title is, is comprehensive. It, it notifies the public. We're amending 27149 regarding public notice requirements for um, land development <laughs> decisions and text amendments, et cetera. With the way that that title is written, you can amend this and adopt the ordinance as amended, and we can add the, the larger size to the text of the ordinance. So when we publish it in Municode, it would contain that 24 by 36. It's well within the scope of your title. Fair enough. So, you do, you, you, so you do not need council action other than just direction to? Motion to amend. Yeah, it would be a motion to amend the ordinance, okay. and, and I know what you're talking about, the um, increasing the sign so, size, and then that's how we'll produce the final document. So I'll make a, I'll make a motion to strike uh, 24, insert 36. It's a, you're, you're changing it from 18 by 24 to 24, 24 by 36. 36. I'm sorry, 8, 24, yeah. So we have a second motion from Councilmember Clendenin for the amendment to change it to 24 by 36. Second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Just All so right. we're clear, so then we read the resolution. Now we yes, read it. After. The amendment is there. Uh, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion, motion to close from Councilmember Clendenin, second from Councilmember Hertek. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilmember Clendenin, would you mind reading item number 34? And then we will record our vote. Okay. An ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, relating to amendments of the Land Code Development, uh, development Code making revisions to the City of Tampa Code of Ordinances, Chapter 27, Zoning and Land Development, amending sections 27-21, Consistency Matrix, amending sections 27-43, Definitions, amending sections 27-91, Intent, amending sections 27-111, Intent and Declaration of Public Policy, amending sections 27-149, Public, Public Notice Requirements for Land Development, <laughs> for land development uh, code amending sections 27-150 final decision by city council and withdrawal of application amending sections 27-182 public realm and public realm zone standards amending sections 27-185 general parking design standards by transportation mode amending sections 27-199 official schedule of dimensional regulations amending sections 27-231, intent and declaration of public policy, amending sections 27-271, authority to establish, amending sections 27-283.11, vehicle parking, amending sections 27-287.25, enforcement authority, penalties, remedies, amending sections 27-330, conflict with other laws, repealing all ordinance or parts of ordinances in conflict thereof, therewith, providing for severability, providing an effective right. date. We have a motion from Councilmember Clendenin, second from Councilmember Miranda, please record your vote. Motion carried unanimously. Yes, yes sir. Oh, no, no, I'm going to do 35 and then I'm going to do the uh, closed session. All right, item number 35 and then I'm going to read the uh, closed session. Uh, is there anybody here for item number 35? Ross Evans, Bell yes, Coordination. Sir. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Sam. Presenting file number BAC 23-25. This is second reading adoption 
of an ordinance to vacate an alleyway, the east and west alleyway located north of Gibbons Avenue, south of Hillsborough Avenue, east of Central Avenue and west of Interstate 275. I am available if you have any questions. Any questions for Mr. Sammons? No. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on item number 35? I see no one, and there's no one registered. We have a motion to close from Councilmember Clendenin, second Councilmember Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilmember Hertek, would you mind reading 35? Sure. File number VAC 23-25, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, vacating, closing, discontinuing, and abandoning that east-west portion of alleyway located north of Giddens Avenue, south of Hillsborough Avenue, east of Central Avenue, and west of Interstate 275 within the plat of East Seminole Heights subdivision in the City of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida, as more fully described in Section 2 hereof, subject to certain covenants, conditions, and restrictions, as more particularly set forth herein, providing for enforcement and penalties for violations, providing for definition, interpretation, and repealing conflicts, providing for severability, providing an effective date. We have a motion from Council Member Hertak. Second, Council Member Miranda, please record your vote. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, I have an announcement to make regarding the 11 a.m. closed session. At this time, and in accordance with Florida Statute 286.0118, we will proceed to a closed attorney-client session to discuss settlement negotiations in the case of Dubois versus City of Tampa. This closed session is estimated to last 45 minutes and will be recorded by a certified court reporter. The names of the persons attending the closed session are as follows. Councilmember Bill Carlson, Councilmember Alan Clendenin, Councilmember Gwen Henderson, Councilmember Lynn Hertek, Councilmember Guido Maniscalco, Councilmember Charlie Miranda, Councilmember Louis Vieira, City Council Attorney Martin Shelby, City Attorney Andrea Zellman, Assistant City Attorney David Harvey, and Certified Court Reporter Sarah Parker. At the conclusion of the closed attorney client session, this meeting will be reopened right here in City Council Chambers and I will announce the termination of the session. A transcript of the closed attorney-client session shall be made part of public records upon conclusion of the Dubois case. We are now in recess and we'll be back after the closed session here. <laughs>